Greetings and salutations, my dearest friends. My name is Samantha, and today we're going to be reading BookTube's favorite cozy mysteries. So you guys know that I have been really just diving straight in to cozy mysteries. I read a lot of romance, predominantly historic romance, and this past year I have really just like stayed in that genre, which I'm totally cool with. It's my favorite genre. I like what I like. But I wanted to try cozy mysteries because they just sound absolutely lovely, and it was all because of Spencer from Intentionally Bookish and Courtney from protagonist so I thought you know what let's do a video reading cozy mystery booktubers favorite books I love videos when people are reading like other youtubers favorite books it's just so much fun because this community is truly a great place so I messaged Courtney from Courtagonist and Spencer from Intentionally Bookish on Instagram and asked them what their favorite cozy mysteries were and they were so kind to answer so first up I asked Courtney what her favorite book was and it came as no surprise that she said Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander this is from the bake shop mystery series I know that she adores Ellie Alexander as an author and I do follow um, Miss Alexander on Instagram and she just seems like a really lovely person so I'm excited to read this Talk more about the synopsis and stuff um, as we get into the reading vlog. I'm going to take you guys with me throughout the week while I'm reading this. So then, Spen then when I messaged Spencer on Instagram, by the way, I will link both of their channels down below. Uh, she said two series. She said that she liked Donna Andrews, but then she also said that she likes the, what is this series called? The Bibliophilia Mystery Series from Kate Carlisle. And that's what we're going to be reading in this video. I have a bookmark because I already started on it. The first book is called Homicide in Hardcover. In general, I have been told that you can read cozy mysteries out of order because most cozy mysteries have like 15 books in a series which is really fun uh but it's a more enjoyable experience to read them in order because you kind of grow with the characters so that's what I'm gonna do so yeah I'm excited to read their favorites because they are the reason that I'm reading this genre and they just they they know what they're talking about I trust their recommendations I'm also going to be reading Cookie Dough or Die by Virginia Lau I have talked about this book because this is one of the books that I did like a book look for during Halloween time I'll pop a picture right here on the screen so that's kind of why I wanted to read this one because um, I was really attracted to the cover when I did that makeup look. I don't remember any like booktuber talking about this one, but when I went book shopping, like specifically looking for cozy mysteries, the girl at my bookstore recommended Virginia Lau. So yeah, we're going to take that recommendation and kind of just throw it in this video. And those are the three books that we're going to be reading this week. And we're just going to be trying out cozy mysteries and seeing if if I like them. I have very high hopes because Spencer and Courtney, I just really trust their opinions and I love their videos. So I'm going into this reading vlog very optimistic. So yeah, I'm just gonna stop blabbing and go into the reading vlog. I'm sitting in my car, my coworker's staring at me because they're literally parked right next to me and I'm filming, but I'm literally crying at like eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I went to Starbucks that, this morning and the line was super long. So I decided to go to Chick-fil-A instead because that line wasn't as long and you know chick-fil-a they go they go through things really fast so i'm sitting in line in chick-fil-a and i'm just sitting there honestly kind of having a pity party i wasn't feeling good i had a rough morning i didn't want to go to work etc etc this random stranger in front of me pays for my meal and that made me cry happy tears and now i'm crying happy tears <laughs> i don't know why i'm posting this on the internet crying but i mean that was just so sweet and it was like literally i was having such a rough morning and that just like switched the flip made me feel so much better and that random stranger paid for my meal and it sounds silly to you guys that i'm crying so refreshing and nice to see that nice people still exist that's all okay i'm such a sap this is why i read romance books guys because i just love like happy things and things make me cry and yeah okay that's it back in my car i'm always in my car <laughs> which is funny because i actually never am in my car i hate driving i despise driving I'm a very anxious driver, so I try to avoid it at all costs. I'm done crying, okay? So yeah, I had a little bit of a cry fest, cry session in my car before work. That guy paying for my meal really just, it made my whole day and I'm determined to have a really great Friday. So, so we're going to the bookstore. Meow, 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 woo. Y'all know I love going to the bookstore and since this is a cozy mystery reading blog, we're gonna search for some cozy mysteries. I don't think that my bookstore is gonna have many because I just went to the bookstore, not last week, but the week before, and I kind of like wiped their cozy mystery section clean, or at least the ones that I were interested in. So unless they got some new ones, I doubt we're gonna find many. But you know what? Christmas romances might be out on the bookshelves because it is November 
after Halloween, after spooky season. So we might find some Christmas romances. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys with me and I guess I'll show you what I get. I will be right back. Hello, hello it is the next day and i forgot to show you guys what books i picked up at the bookstore it was a pretty small book haul i only got one two three four five six seven books and i only paid like five dollars i also realized i had picked up some cozy mysteries earlier in the month and i never showed you guys i think i showed you on instagram but i'm gonna talk about them right now too because why not since it's a cozy mystery haul let's start with the cozy mysteries first one i got is called lethal licorice by amanda flower it looks like this this is a part of her amish candy shop mystery series and i actually have a few books from amanda flower i picked up a murder she wrote book i know that these books are so stinking popular and i've never read one and i know spencer adores them so it's like perfect for this video this is called a little yuletide murder so maybe we'll read it around the christmas time Although everyone's reading Christmas romances right now, which is just lovely. See, here's another one by Amanda Flower. This is Premeditated Peppermint. This is also part of her Amish Candy Shop mystery series. This isn't like an official book haul, so I'm not going over all the synopsis for these books, but you will see them in future videos for sure. I picked up two from Victoria Hamilton. The first one is called No Mallets Intended. It has a little cute puppy. And this is part of her Vintage Kitchen Mystery Series. Next one is called A Merry Muffin Mystery. And it is called Much Ado About Muffin. I love the puns. Muffin baker Mary Winter sees an innocent woman accused of murder. It's dough or die. The puns are just like lovely and cozy and like how did i not know about this genre oh i guess i picked up a lot of victoria hamilton books because the next one is a part of her vintage kitchen mystery series as well and it's called freezer i'll shoot that's cute these covers are just so freaking cute so cute okay, so those are the books that i picked up earlier in the week and i never got to show you i picked up three at the bookstore yesterday so the first one is lord of the wings by donna andrews I believe this is part of her Meg, Meg Lanslow, Meg Lanslow, however you pronounce that. I think it's part of that series. And when I messaged Spencer asking her what her favorite cozy mystery was, she mentioned this series. Now this is the 19th book in the series. I have no idea if you need to read it in order, but this takes place during the Halloween time. So I mean, it would have been so perfect to read it last month, but I'm really happy that I have it. This one is a Christmas cozy mystery, which is super exciting. This is called Death, Snow, and Mistletoe by Valerie S. Malamont looks like that another Christmas or it looks like a Christmas uh cozy mystery this is called paw prints and predicaments by Bethany Blake this is part of the lucky paws pet sitting mystery series okay so I did pick up a few Christmas books it is to all a good night this is an anthology and the reason I picked up this anthology is because it has Jill Shalvis. I know so many people who read like contemporary romance absolutely adore Jill Shalvis, and I've never read anything from her so I thought why not pick up this little anthology? Oh gosh, the synopsis. It says prepare to have your toes curled by some of the holiday's hunkiest heroes in this hot, 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 three hots collection. It isn't a Christmas book. I think it was put in the Christmas section because it's it's red. I don't know. But this is Dangerous Lady by Amanda Scott. I really want to collect pretty much all of these illustrated covers that Amanda Scott has because they're so gorgeous. And I already have two. So I'm just going to add this to my collection. I picked up this one because of the cover. It is The Night Before Christmas. This is another anthology and it's a historical anthology. This cover though, it's like a Voyager Santa. Like he's peeking through the window of these people making out. And that is just so 
hilarious and I needed to have it just for the cover alone. I suppose you guys want actual reading updates. So I started Cookie Dough or Die by Virginia Lowell. Looks like this and I'm only on page 19 but I am enjoying it so far. This one says Olivia Grayson is the proud owner of the Gingerbread House, a quaint shop that specializes in all things cookie. And her best friend Maddie is her sidekick, baking up scrumptious treats for their cookie themed parties. But now they must take a break from baking and turn their attention to recreating a recipe for murder. Very scandalous. So a famous business owner named Clarice Chamberlain is found dead and apparently she left Olivia a hefty amount of money and also land in her will. Character Olivia actually becomes the prime suspect in the murder because people are thinking you know she wanted the money so now she needs to clear her reputation and it sounds really you good. Know what I forgot to show you guys so I got this book at the bookstore. Hadn't even realized that it came with a little bookmark. How Freaking cute is that little raccoon with glasses. I mean, stop. It's a magnetic bookmark. It doesn't get cuter than that. I love when I find bookmarks in books or pieces of paper, or I know people probably won't agree with me, but I love when I find books that people have like written and annotated in. It just, it feels like I am like sharing a story with someone else and like finding out why someone else loved this book. I don't know. Am I being cheesy? Probably. But like this book has probably traveled many a bookstores and somehow it ended up with me and I got this bookmark. Anyways, okay. I just wanted to show you that. That was it. Hello. Hi. Today is a cozy day. So that is why I look the way that I do. It's Friday. I work today, but I'm actually on my lunch break right now. So I thought, you know what? On my lunch break, I always try to do the most. I try to do the most. I try to go to the post office. I try to go to the grocery store. So today I was like, you know what? It's Friday. I have a four day weekend, which is amazing. And I'm just gonna read during my lunch. So I'm laying in my bed and we're going to read. Okay, so updates. Both Spencer and Courtney responded to my message on Instagram when I asked them what their favorite cozy mysteries were, which I'm just, so happy that they did because I was kind of like banking this video on them responding because they actually responded a couple days ago but I had to wait for these books to come into the mail because I had to order both of them I didn't have them it's Courtney what her favorite cozy mystery was if she had to pick one and she picked the bake shop mystery series by Ellie Alexander it says welcome to tour a friendly small town family bake shop where the treats are so good that sometimes it's criminal Ooh, ominous love it it says after graduating from culinary school juliet capshot returns to her quaint hometown of ashland oregon to heal a broken heart and help her mom at the family bakery the oregon shakespeare festival that sounds divine very cozy is bringing in lots of tourists looking for some crumpets to go with their heroic couplets but when one of torts customers turns up dead there's much ado about murder this sounds really good. Very excited to read that. So that is the book that Courtney picked. We'll be reading that. And then Spencer said two series. She said a Donna Andrew series, which I don't have the first book. For some reason, I have the 19th book in that series. So I need to I need to catch up with the rest. But she also recommended the Bibliophile Mystery Series by Kate Carlisle. I love this cover. If you guys don't know, I love books about books and literature. So I mean, both of those kind of have those elements in it. So that's exciting. This one says Brooklyn Wainwright is a skilled surgeon. Sure, her patients might smell like mold and have spines made of leather, but no ailing book is going to die on her watch. So she restores classic books. The same can't be said of Abraham, oh, I'm not gonna pronounce that last name right. Kar Karotsky, Karots. Why, why, why are they gonna do that to me? Why are they gonna do that to me? I can't pronounce the last name. Okay, anyways. On the eve of a celebration for his latest book restoration, Brooklyn finds her mentor lying in a pool of his own blood. With his final breath, Abraham leaves Brooklyn a cryptic message. Remember the devil and smiles as she takes possession of his priceless and supposedly cursed copy. To clear her name since she finds herself accused of murder. Yeah, so we're gonna read that one as well. Really excited to jump into both of those series. I do have an update for you guys. I finished Cookie Dough or Die by Virginia Lowell. 
I actually adored this book. It was just what I needed, like, in my time of life. <laughs> Am I being dramatic? It's exactly how I would imagine just a quaint, cozy mystery. I gave it a four out of five stars. I really adored our main character, Olivia. And as you can see, I already, like, dog-eared some pages because just so much of this book I loved. I adored our main character, Olivia. I feel like with the few cozy mysteries, I've only read two cozy mysteries before filming this video, all of the main characters are very quirky. I feel like that's conducive to the cozy mystery genre and like a amateur sleuth type of personality. But our main character in this book was just really level-headed and calm and rational. The course of events that she took to discover what was going on in the town were just really smart and well thought out. I didn't once get annoyed with our main character and all of the quirky characters were the side characters. She had a quirky mom and a quirky best friend and they just really made the story so warm and sweet and I just I loved it. I loved that our main characters were best friends that owned this cookie shop. Loved that they worked with the local police officer and local detective to really find out what was going on. Like they weren't dumb about the evidence they were finding and they didn't put themselves in like these insane dangerous situations. Like, like I said, they were just really well thought out. It's really, really good. Oh, which one are we going to read? I only have an hour to read. Well, now I only have like 45 minutes because I've been talking to you guys for like 15 minutes. Um, hmm. So you know what, darlings? I really enjoyed the baking aspect. Oh, I have the hiccups. Really enjoyed the baking aspect of this book so i'm gonna roll with that and we're gonna read meet your baker by ellie alexander it's just gonna be a chill little lunch break and i will update you guys later but so far so good hey hey y'all um I have an update for you guys so i finished meet your baker by ellie alexander and i gave this book five stars. It was fan freaking tastic. I really enjoyed our main character, Juliet or Jules. I just, she was very similar to Olivia in Cookie Do or Die. Like I feel like in real life, these girls would be besties. I mean, the three of us could be besties. Why not? If it was a perfect world, <laughs> but they were just really similar. They were both level headed, I really liked their thought process as they were trying to like figure out who committed the murder. Baking element to them, Olivia owns a cookie cutter shop and then Jules comes home and she helps her mom with the bakery. But Jules um, has been working on a cruise ship for years and years. So she just loves food. And I just, I loved the baking aspect to it. Food was a huge part in like both of these books, but predominantly Meet Your Baker. Like, I don't know why, but I got hungry when I was reading this book. I've already went over the synopsis, but Jules is having a difficult time with her marriage. So she ends up coming home and helping her mom with her bake shop. Um, but as she's coming home, she realized that the quaint little town she remembers is not as innocent as it seems. She finds someone murdered in the bake shop. So she has to discover who it is. A couple reasons that I gave this a five stars. Number one, I just loved Jules. I loved her backstory. I Her relationship with her mom was really realistic. She was very level headed um as she was kind of like discovering what was going on with the town I loved her so much and i want to know more about her backstory especially like her marriage you guys know i'm a romance reader so this is kind of like hinting towards like a love triangle because she comes home and then she um starts talking to her uh, high school boyfriend but then she's also married but she's having a difficult time with her marriage so it kind of is like hinting towards a love triangle i know it's not a romance but you know the romance lover in me just really wants to like know that whole back story I definitely bought almost the entire series Ugh! I just love this book so much like as soon as I was halfway through I just knew it was going to be a favorite so I went and bought like the next five books in the series <laughs> I don't know why I do this and I just adored this book I really did like this book but the thing about this book was that the murder was predictable and that's not a bad thing is yes, is if the author is truly doing their job and they're giving you enough context clues and they're writing like a well-written story realistically maybe you should be able to like guess who the murder is but this one i just knew like from the beginning 
who it was going to be. There was like different ways that it panned out that I was kind of shocked by, but for the most part, like I, I, I kind of knew who it was going to be. And for someone who doesn't read Cozy Mysteries, I wouldn't think that I would just be like able to guess that. Versus this, I had no zero zilch idea of who the murderer was. Like I was shocked. I'm not going to tell you guys because I don't want to spoil it. But when they said who the murderer was, I was literally gasping. I was like, <gasps> it was like three o'clock in the morning. I was binge reading this book because it was just so good. It was just like, who the heck is the murderer? I even was like taking down notes to being like, okay, he could be the murderer. Oh, but she might be the murderer. Oh, but maybe it's him. Like there were just a ton of different people that could have done it. And the person who did it, I was like, oh mind freaking blown so i love the main character i loved all of the side characters in the backstory and then i was just really engaged in the story five stars it was fantastic next reading updates is homicide in hardcover by kate carslyle i am halfway through you can see my bookmark i just filmed the intro because i forgot to film the intro for this video um i'm on page 154 I do like this book. There's not a ton of like action. Like I don't really feel like our main character is like putting it upon herself to really like hunt down the murder. I feel like a lot of the things that are going on are kind of just like falling into her lap, which is fine. I do enjoy our main character, Brooklyn. She um, restores old books, which I just find super fascinating. I do like this one so far. I just wish we're getting like more, um, I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like I wish our main character took more initiative to like find out who the murderer was because it was her mentor. It was someone that she loved and grew up with um, and that she really looked up to that was killed. So I feel like I wish she kind of like did more to find out who the murderer was. I feel like she's kind of just going through the monotony of working and like everyday life, which is fine. And I never thought I would say this, but like I want a little bit more suspense. I don't know. I'm only halfway through. So far, it is really good, though. Sitting at, like, a three or four star for me, but I will keep you guys updated when I finish. I'm going to try to finish this one tonight, so I will be back with my final update. Here's a little peek at all my cozy mysteries. I just got a bunch from that cozy mystery lot on eBay. I'll link that video down below of me unhauling it. But, yeah, so I used to only have, like, five cozy mysteries, and now I have all of these, and this is double stacked. So there are, sorry, there are books behind here, too, that are just cozy mysteries i'm trying to keep all the authors together a lot of joanne fluke i have a lot of kate carlisle because it came in that book box and then i have a lot of diane mott davidson tora hamilton amanda flower yeah so just a bunch of different different books that i'm going to be trying out so if you guys want to see like a part two to this video just let me know hello hi i swear i think i've been in this sweater the entire reading vlog but i mean i'm working from home so clearly was getting ready for bed and then i realized hello i need to film the outro to this video so here we are cheers hope you guys are all having a really good day night wherever you are let's talk about the books y'all i finished all the books so let's go over them let me update you guys on homicide and hardcover because that was the last book I finished. I really did enjoy this book. I just wish it had, hmm, how do I say this? I feel like the main character just didn't have a ton of feelings for the murder. Supposedly this book is cursed and I don't know about y'all, but I'm not about to work on a cursed book the day after someone dies holding the book. And that's what, like what her main character did. The very next day she was going to restore the book. Uh, there was blood on the book and they kind of just like wiped it off and were like, oh well. So it just seemed a little, like I feel like if I saw like my mentor and lifelong friend die, I would be a little bit more emotional. And I feel like I was kind of missing the emotion in this book. Like it was kind of, it was a little flat for me. With that said, I adored her best friend in this book. She was very humorous. This book was more humorous than like the other two books. It had an almost like satire, sarcastic vibe to it, which I really liked. So overall, I did like it. The mystery was still interesting. I would be interested to read the rest of the series to kind of like see Brooklyn grow. Um, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I also read Cookie Dough or Die by Virginia Lau. 
really enjoyed this one. I gave it a four out of five stars. Lastly, we read Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander, and this was just amazing. This was Courtney's recommendation. I gave it a five out of five stars. I'm going to pick up the second book like tonight. I'm so just enamored. And then also, I feel like I'm always reading an ebook because I like to read right before bed. So sometimes I just like read a little bit on my phone. But picking up the second book from the Kitchen Witch series by Morgana Best. I think it's called Dizzy Spells. I think that's what it's called. It's a really short book. I think it's like only 180 pages. I'm about 50% the way through. Um, this is the second book in a series. I read the first book in my witch, reading witchy books reading vlog. I think that was, I don't remember. I'm gonna link it down below. The book was just okay for me. I gave it a three out of five stars, but obviously I enjoyed it enough to continue with the series. The entire series follows our main character who is just down on her luck. She lost her job. Uh, she was evicted. Her boyfriend broke up with her and she's just like all around a terrible baker. Like she always has these like really odd and bizarre things happen to her in the kitchen like an oven will explode or her boyfriend got food poisoning from the nachos that she made so she just has some really bad luck she finds out that her aunt passed away she was never close with her aunt but her aunt left her a house as well as her business which is a bakery she moves to australia she inherits the house and the bakery and then she also discovers that she has witches in her family line so she has a little bit of magic in her family and then she sort of just discovers her own magic she also has to like figure out how to run a bakery when she can't bake and then there's murders obviously so in the first book somebody dies in her bake shop like right after they eat a cupcake so obviously she's like the prime suspect she's new to town and then in the second book um which we're reading right now that one she ends up finding a dead body left on her doorstep and um one of her friends is the suspect so she has to figure out what's going on so that's what we're reading right now. I'm enjoying it, but I feel like it's sitting at a three star as well. So that is my experience with Cozy Mysteries. Honestly, I think I have to say this has been one of my favorite reading vlogs I've ever done. Most of my reading vlogs I have found very good books, but it's usually like hit or miss. This was just a successful reading vlog all around. I enjoyed every single one of the books that I read. I'm really just hopeful for cozy mysteries i know that sounds so weird but i feel like i'm really going to like this genre so i'm excited to dive in more that is it thank you so so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me it means the world to me and i hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy i'll talk to you later